You have been into building Hobo for the last three, four years? Four and a half. We got a deal from both of them through Shark Tank. There's 40% wastage in this market. The farmer who has like two acres of land throwing away almost one acre worth of crop. That's kind of what drew us to the whole thing. Most people will not understand what it takes to build a big business. Supporting you is not the friends who put up a post when you do really well. It's the people who understand like why you're showing up two hours late, why you look dead. I think those are the friendships that last. The flower market makes up almost 5 lakhs of acres of production in India. The wastage is as high as 40%. Our guest Ria Kurituri started a business in the flower industry to reduce the wastage. But here, we will not talk about her business Hovu as they appeared on Shark Tank. But what we will talk about here is why young Indians are choosing entrepreneurship, what drives them and what's the battle for women in entrepreneurship like. And I would also like to thank us sponsors Prime Venture Partners for sponsoring this show. Time to meet Ria. Hi Ria, welcome to the Neon Show. Hi Nancy, nice to be here. How are you feeling today? Good, thank you so much for having me and having us share our Huvu story. You know, it's our pleasure and you were in bank and it's Saturday <laughs> yeah. and uh, certainly you're not having any weekend, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think from the August to November period, we don't really have any weekends at all, just festive times. Yeah. So yeah, it's okay though. So uh, before we dive deep into the conversation, I would uh, also want to share with our listeners how we got connected. Yeah. Uh, so we have a WhatsApp group. Uh, all these female founders are part of that WhatsApp group. And we ask for help, any kind of help if you want to hire or if any of your friend is looking for a job, you ask all kind of help in that group. Uh, so uh, part of my job, uh, I cold email to all these potential guests and reach out to them. So I wanted to have uh, Malvika from CCD. She is the CEO of CCD. And um, I really, uh, you know, respect her and wanted to bring her on the show. And I uh, message in the group if anyone is connected with her and uh, Ria messaged me. Yeah. And I really like the way she uh, tried to help me out. And she said, if I can share a brief message for Malvika and I shared a message and she shared that message with Malvika and the kind of message I got from Malvika yeah and I was just amazed uh, she not only you know she declined because uh, she thought this is not the good time for her to join the podcast but the way she appreciated our efforts and she congratulated us for the efforts we were putting and the launch and everything. It was just amazing. Mm -hmm. And I really like the way you tried to help me out. Yeah. No, I Thank mean, you so much. No, I'm so glad. First of all, being on that group with yeah. all of those amazing female founders, I always felt like a little bit of an imposter. Yeah. I was like, I'll just keep quiet. So yeah. No one knows I'm here. <laughs> but so wonderful to see them all interacting. Yeah. And then, of course, so um, Ishan Hegde and Amartya Hegde are, are investors, so her sons. So that's how I kind of made the connection. And like, yeah, like you said, what a class act, the way that she responded. It was yes, so amazing. It was so nice. And yeah, I'm happy to connect people if I can. You know, I, I think uh, it's a privilege to be in that WhatsApp group. Yeah. And uh, I also try to find out a way to help everyone because you feel very small that oh my god all yeah. these women are there part of the group how you yeah. can also contribute and add value to all of them yeah so yes uh Rio, i um read on your website that uh, your father's business karuturi business was once india's largest exporter of roses um, uh, in the world yeah so yeah i want to know about uh if you can share those days mm -hmm. like watching your father as a little girl mm -hmm. and building like he's building the business from scratch how were these those days yeah so actually our journey with roses starts pretty much from our childhood so my mom and my dad actually started together and they started with a small farm in Chikpalapur in Bangalore uh, and it was in 94, so the same year that my sister Yashoda was born. I was also born in 1994. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's how they started out. And, you know, as kids, there was really no separation between the... So, uh, we lived in this apartment, which was right next to that office building. So, like, we could look out of our window and see the office. And we would often walk there after school and all that stuff. Uh, and, you know, weekends, our parents would be like, road trip, and they would take us to the farm. Yeah. <laughs> and then they would just be working the whole time. Yeah. 
um so it was really wonderful to see that journey and you know our parents kind of going to kenya and buying that farm i don't think they expected it let alone anyone else mm-hmm. and then becoming the world's largest rose cultivator and stuff like that um i think it was amazing like i think we saw the stress that they went through the you know the hardships and all the midnight calls and everything i remember my parents used to have a walkie talkie next to their bed you know back then and they would get a walkie talkie in the middle of the night be like the generator has like burst into flames and then they would like rush to the farms and stuff it was crazy and you know as kids there's really nothing more that you can ask for like to be exposed to that much ambition and drive and hard work so it's such a huge for in bangalore So we mostly grew up in Bangalore but we also lived in Ethiopia for a bit and then we used to travel to Kenya all the time and it was all uh, for the business yeah for my uh, for the business and both our parents worked actually so my uh, your mother was also into yeah so my mom and dad worked together and then my grandmom used to live with us so she would kind of be at home with us all the time um and yeah it was amazing and i remember when we were little kids like uh for our birthdays we would always go to the farm and you know distribute things and stuff like that and my granddad would always be like they, he would introduce your show then she he'd be like this is the ceo you know she's going to take over and then he'd be like this is ria <laughs> you know because i was the second but you know like from such a young age especially as girls to have someone be like this is a huge thing that your parents are building and like you better buck up so you can take care of it in the future like i think that was amazing um and yeah super proud of my parents till day so so uh, they were in india like in bangalore then they went to kenya and set up the farm so they were always uh yeah we got around they were always jet setting around um i remember so i have a younger sister she's 10 years younger and she was born when this whole madness was happening with ethiopia kenya and stuff and my dad would like feel so guilty because he was traveling so much he would buy her a toothbrush every time he went somewhere and i think she had like 60 toothbrushes <laughs> before she had enough teeth to yeah. brush you know so they were all over but uh one thing that they did really well is that they really prioritized like these are the boundaries that i'm not going to cross as a family so like every birthday they were always in town no matter like like what was happening in the world um and they always made sure that you know as much as possible they would take us with them as well so we were part of the journey and just out of curiosity i'm asking like uh, what were the early days for your father if you can remember like you yeah. were starting a business in 1994 and uh, an offline business like, what did he think and if mm. he ever shares that with you yeah we talk about it a lot now actually yeah. i think as kids you're just like oh my parents are doing something yeah um but when now- you're small you don't appreciate those things yeah. then when you grow up and yeah you kind of start understanding your parents uh, much better yeah and i think honestly starting huvu brought us a lot closer to our family like we thought not working in the family business would like be you know something that would uh, create distance but we understand what they went through now mm-hmm. kind of having our own baby and being obsessed with it uh, and every time we're like oh you know like two people are having a relationship in the office and then there's a the third person and all this stuff yeah. they're like oh we've done this hundreds of times mm-hmm. yeah which is nice but um when i was a kid actually yashda and i both would get asked all the time cuz we'd be like oh my dad sells roses cuz you know as a kid you don't know how to say yes. it better and people would be like can you afford to be at the school <laughs> like what's going on so i don't think we really understood it then yeah. and my dad has this really nice story of how he was looking for roses for my mom and he couldn't find it so he started a farm the actual story i feel like i can say it now cuz yeah. it's been enough time uh my dad obsessively reads the news um and at that time he is actually applying for jobs in america but one day he came across this ad for a subsidy for this floriculture land uh it was being promoted by the government a lot back then and then he was like you know why not he had no experience at all and he just kind of jumped in with both feet and he doesn't come from business background he does come from a business background so my granddad also like was an entrepreneur My granddad actually started as a farmer and then he started like a cables business and he had like a pencil factory and yeah. he he just I think he just loved business more than any particular field. So I think that gave my dad a lot of confidence as well. Um he wasn't working with the family business at all at that point. He wanted to do something on his own. Um but yeah, so then he just jumped into roses. He was like, "You know, I'm sure I can figure it out." And he's like one of those people who's very curious. Like he loves learning new things. So, yeah, he just today he knows everything about roses like we always say that's his fourth child you know like when he goes and he talks to his rose plants in the farm he and he does that yeah and he like check every leaf and yeah. 
he'll know way ahead of time if the, any diseases are going to affect the greenhouse and stuff like that. Um, so I think he just like really fell in love with what he was doing. So this happened before Varo, he got married with Kamada. Like this happened before marriage or no, no, started the business? 94 is when he started. So uh -huh. Yeshta was just born. So it was like, I think two years into my parents being married. And uh, how's your, like, I'm very much curious uh, for, uh, for like, to know your relationship with your parents and your parents' relationship with each other because mm -hmm. uh, I answer that we are also entrepreneurs and yeah. what it feels when you are co-founder also, your wife also. So yeah. how was your, uh, how was their relationship as? Yeah, so you know that parents often have like good cop, bad cop. My parents like took it way further than that where even in the office they would always do that. So I kind of always like, you know, even as kids, like we would just go and sit in the office and be doing homework yeah. or coloring book or whatever. And then we would see, you know, our dad would be like so sweet and nice to people. And then they would come to my mom to release the payments and she'd be like, no, <laughs> she was like the stone wall. <laughs> She's like, I need every receipt. I need everything. Um, but it was amazing. You know, like I it was never that my mom was working for my dad or my dad was working for my mom. It was that they were truly partners in everything that they did. Um, and you know, one thing that I still remember that they still do to this day is they'll go on these long walks, uh, which seems very romantic, but they only talk about business on these walks and they'll come back and yeah. they'll have so many ideas that they would have discussed with each other. Yeah. And you know, seeing that kind of trust and um, synchronization that they both have, it was just amazing. Like I always thought like you can't build a business unless you have a partner because of kind of seeing them. The lonely journey, you yeah. have to have someone to share. Yeah, and the way that they balance out each other's skill sets, they both are such different people. Like I, I probably would not be able to find more different people at all, but their skill sets, like, their personalities, everything kind of complement each other rather than clash with each other, even though it's so different. Um, and honestly, even with Yashoda and myself, when we were thinking about starting, it was a little bit scary because we were like, oh, what if we fight, you know, like Indian siblings, you know, it's always a thing. Um, but when we were having our discussion, we were like, if mom and dad who are so different can do yeah. it, probably we can as well. And our, me and Yashoda are very different people as well. So we're like, maybe we can complement each other instead of kind of clashing. And I think that's what's happened with our journey overall. So that was really cool to see. Yeah, it's a fact that all siblings fight, no matter they're Indian or <laughs> from what country. Uh, we all fight and crazy fights happen. Yeah. So what's that one annoying thing about you like that uh, you show the fights? Yeah. I think just listing one would be difficult. Um, honestly, I was a menace as a child. Yeah. I feel so bad for Yashoda because since she was two years old, she's been like the responsible she's old very child. very organized. And she is. Yeah, she's the perfect child. Yeah. Honestly, like I remember when I was a kid, I would we would sleep in the same room, honest, obviously. And then I would wake up in the morning and I'd see and I'd be like, okay, she's still sleeping. So I can also sleep for some more time. Eventually, I would wake up at noon and by then she's lived her entire life, <laughs> you know, from six o'clock in the morning, she's up. My mom used to make timetables for us, yeah. she used to follow it to the dot. I used to lose it within one day. And I was like, how can I have such a perfect sister? It's so it's unfair. Kind of, it becomes a burden, like you yeah. also have to. Yeah, 100%. And all of my teachers were like, you know, Yashita is so perfect. And they'd yeah. be like, oh, I'm so excited <laughs> to have you in my class. And I was like, no, <laughs> you know. Um, I can't tell you how many of my teachers continue to call me Yashoda after she left the school like three, four years ago also. But that's crazy. Yeah. So, you know, I used to really annoy her a lot. And honestly, she was the best older sister. I don't even say this to be nice to her because it yeah. was a burden how yeah. nice she was. Like um, one of the popular stories from our childhood was we were on a road trip. And, you know, she did, she was saying something, I was saying something. I got irritated and I bit her. And I bit her really, really oh, hard. I was like maybe five. I was too oh. old to be biting on, but yeah. like not old enough to really be a point of concern. But I remember my parents were so upset because it was really, really bad. And yeah. they were like, apologize to her. And she's crying and all that stuff. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to apologize to her. And it got to the point where they're like, we're leaving you if you don't apologize to her. You just have to apologize, right? And I was like, no, I'm not going to and all this stuff. But the thing that everyone remembers the most about the story is that Yashita was crying, not because she was hurt, but because she was like, don't leave Ria on the road. <laughs> you oh know? Like even at that point, and I was like, stop being so nice to me all the time. 
um so yeah i used to make her late for school every day and you know she used to just be like how am i standing in the yeah. detention room yeah. like because of you um so yeah i used to do a lot of things to annoy her another kid yeah probably <laughs> they were like maybe you'll try a third time uh no honestly our younger sibling i think is like the joy of our family yeah. like she'll be so mortified to hear that but honestly like i think we all love her the most um and i think even for this happens with all the younger kids all the younger kids and there's a 10 year gap between me and her right so i think for all of us she was like oh my god like she's the most special person and continues to be the case today uh she's applying for colleges this year and like we're all on tender hooks cuz we're like what are we going to do when she's gone but like should we get a pet like what should we do so yeah i think um i think it was great for my parents too cuz they got to like enjoy her childhood probably a little bit more than yeah. they enjoyed our childhood cuz they were working so this is something all parents say like um, i have a 3 year old kid 4 year old now uh-huh. and he's a boy total wild <laughs> and after him i don't want to have another boy no. or any child i'm tired exhausted Can i hear this when he grows up <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is truth. I'm yeah. tired, exhausted. Yeah, and he's like so naughty. So, uh, so parents tell me these stories that they should have a sibling, and I have a, a younger brother, and I yeah. have a great bonding with him. Mm-hmm. So when I see him, when I, we are spending quality time with each other, and I see him, and I'm think like the only thing I think about, uh, Kabir is going to miss this kind of uh, yeah. relationship. Yeah, but. And now I think it's not possible for me <laughs> weekly and emotionally. Yeah. Honestly, so one of my best friends is an only child and I'm her sibling. Like at the, like you know yeah. to the point where our parents like we started looking similar I think at some point in our childhood because yeah. we used to spend so much time together. So I feel like people find their siblings in life like mm-hmm. either through biology or through like just And I think that I don't not sure I'll see that after yeah. maybe 10 year or 20 year. Yeah. Uh kids when they have to look out for relationships outside their family they are more strong right? yeah because they know they have to find someone who they can connect with yeah so it will be difficult for kabir but i think i think it will be a good difficulty yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, ria i also saw in one of your videos uh, where yashoda was mentioning that the idea to start hobo came uh, when she watched um, uh, your mother praying so just want to know how's your relationship with god like as a family mm-hmm. so as a family we're very religious i would say like i mean just yesterday we had like a big puja at home and stuff like that um my mom is definitely like the driving force of that um it's really funny cuz even compared to my grandparents to her like she's more religious than them wow. like as a kid she would like do the puja at the ha- home and like then run off to school and stuff like that like she so yeah like she has three kids yeah and she has a business to manage yeah. and she's religious and like doing puja with all the steps possible yeah she starts at 5 a.m. like at 5 a.m. and wow. her hear her chanting and stuff she's little, like she's one of those crazy super moms that you hear about um but yeah also my grandma lived with us for the longest time so i think they like balanced each other out um so she's definitely the most religious my dad also like has been on and off his whole life Um Yashoda actually teaches the Bhagavad Gita so she also is fairly religious. I don't think into the ceremonial part as much but um very spiritual. I would say I'm probably the least me and Shriya my younger sister are probably the least puja oriented in the family. Uh which makes it interesting being in the puja space cuz um I think we just have to learn a lot from our customers and like hear what it means to them. um and something that i always share with people you know a lot of young people will be like what is this puja what does it mean and stuff like that i always share that when i went to college of course my mom sent these like small god idols with me um and you know whenever i walk back from classes i'd always pick a few flowers from the bushes and put it there but for me it wasn't really about puja it was it wasn't about god as much it was more about okay i'll take a picture and send it to my mom and my grandma you know like that was my connection yeah. to puja and god yeah. 
Uh, it was just a way of like connecting with them, yeah. which I think is actually true for a lot of people today. And I'm like, that's not wrong and that's not bad. You know, it's just a gateway into some kind of mindful practice. I think it's a great way to connect with your family members also as yeah. kids because Kabir also has a routine. Mm. So he's four year old, doesn't understand God or uh, spirituality or any kind of uh, these things. But he has a routine with his grandmother. So mm. around four or five, they'll go to the temple together yeah. and... Um, He'll come back, he'll show me his tikka, yeah. he tikka lagaya, they saw me. So every time we are out and we have any temple, he's like, Swami, Namaste, yeah. Krishna Ji, Namaste. Yeah. So it, it's so sweet to it's really see cute. all of those things. So yeah, I think he has found a great way to bond with uh, his, his grand grandparents. Yeah, like even I remember when Yashita was a baby because she was like the first grandchild and stuff. Like when she was a kid, everyone would be like, say Namo and then she'd be yeah. like, Namo. Like yeah. as a baby, it was so cute. Um, I hear yeah. and then I remember Shriya when she was a little kid also she would be like mom can you sing me songs and I don't think we ever asked our mom to sing a song yeah. <laughs> but my mom was like okay so she used to sing her bhajans in bed like to put her to sleep mm -hmm. and so that's how Shriya learned a lot of those things too so I think it's like it's human connections right like that's what teaches you to love these things nice and you have been into uh, building hobo for last I think three four years Four and a half. Four and a half yeah. years. And you guys are doing puja flowers. So if you can tell us, uh, what's our relationship with God as Indians? Mm -hmm. Because we uh, do puja differently yeah. in India. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, India as a country, I won't even talk about Hinduism specifically or anything, is extremely religious. Um, you know, there are some crazy stats about how religious travel is like one of the highest spends of, you know, the median household and in terms of tourism. Um, I think somewhere around 84% of Indians, uh, I'm not talking about Hindus, I'm just saying 84% of Indians have a shrine in their house, right? Um, so it's crazy, our connection with God. And I think what's really special also is that across religions, right? Like today when I drive past like Jama Masjid and stuff like that, I'll find Panni roses and Rajni Ganda. Um, and when you go to a church, like in India, you do offer flowers even in churches and stuff. So I think it's a very big part of our livelihood and when we first started you know we were a part of this thing called Techstars it was an accelerator program and there's a lot of like just returned from America or like very young you know analysts and stuff like that that we would interact with and they would be like do people do puja like I feel like that's not really a thing anymore and we'd be like okay you know like just next time that you're going around like notice your cab right like if they have god and like mm. flowers in it notice how many temples you pass just around this one block of this we work office or whatever and you know then we'll figure it out type of thing and they would come back a week later and they'd be like they're everywhere yes. you know like these flowers are everywhere but more than that like in india you really can't go more than like 10 15 minutes on the road without coming across a temple or like some place of worship right to the point where houses will have a tiny shrine in their gate and all of that stuff too um, so I think it's a big part of our livelihood. I think it's not the Sunday church kind of model. It's much more like an everyday engagement with some kind of spirituality and it differs for everyone. Um, so it's a very exciting space to be building in. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of amazing things being done product wise, but also content wise, community wise, just to help people connect with this very important aspect of their life, which has been unorganized and has been um, you know, like you don't really have a lot of information on it. You call your mom, you call your priest if you really have yeah. to, but you don't really know what the different things mean, even though you know that the traditions are beautiful. So I think it's great if we can kind of bring a fresh pair of eyes to it and just make you relook at the same things and be like, yeah, like every cab does have flowers in it yes. for their like little Ganesha or little Hanuman idol. And that is actually really beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. So whether you believe or not. So. I think something similar happened uh, during your Shark Tank episode also. Mm -hmm. uh, Vinita asked, Who does Pooja do in the market? It's small. Yeah. I yeah. said, I'm going to buy it. I'm going to buy it and buy it. Yeah. I think. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. You know, I think to see both sides of those coins. Yes. I think, you know, if someone... There's a lot of people who get it and a lot of people who are like, of course, everyone does puja. But I'm actually very grateful that she brought up that fact. Yes. Because I'm sure a lot of people watching from home also would have, like younger people, right, would have been like, oh, do people do puja? And she's speaking her truth in yeah. terms of, you know, her experience. 
but it was also really wonderful to have aman kind of be like no like yes. i do puja all the time cuz usually we have to give that justification yeah. um both both our sides of india right like it's amazing that we have people who have kind of broken out of that mm-hmm. um you know that space and they're living such different lives from their parents but it's also wonderful that we have people who are still connected yeah. to that aspect and like i said i think for me when i see these flowers in puja it's a part of a mindful experience that you do every day right for other people it'll be running or meditation or yoga or something like that as long as you have that space in your life yeah. and you're taking those like 10 minutes for yourself yeah. like that's all that matters no i think uh, one more observation i have made uh, in hindus we have like lots of steps mm-hmm. of doing a puja like we clean uh, the idols and um, fir roli lagate hain fir akshat chadate hain fir phool chadate hain fir diya banate hain so it's like it has lots of steps and this is the most simple yeah yeah uh, puja yeah. varna to bahut zyada jaise meri mummy bahut zyada puja mein to she'll prepare uh, a proper thali of puja she'll have white chandan for bhagwan shiv she'll have ye- yellow chandan for bhagwan vishnu and she'll uh, prepare this uh, special uh, drink for bhagwan uh, shiv because my mother and my father they both are uh, huge devotees of shiva mm-hmm. so wo log doodh ka ek pyala banate hain aur mandir mein jaake chadate hain usko they have like a proper routine with all the steps but yeah. even if we want to do puja and we want to fo- follow those steps it's it doesn't fit with our routine mm-hmm. we don't have time to find white chandan or yellow chandan and we don't i think i don't have that kind of patience but i still want to do puja every day so the most convenient step uh, i find is just order flowers from zepto i clean my puja i'll offer flowers and i'll just let the diya yeah and it's the most simple like it's simple to do yeah. and it's something you'll do it every day Hundred percent, right? Like I think this is uh, another way how Indians have haven't stopped you uh, using flowers. Yeah, today. yeah, exactly. So you know, a big part of my job obviously is understanding people's puja practices. And after four and a half years, I can probably say that I don't even know like point five percent of it, right? Like there is so much variation, and like you said, you know, um, it's done with so much love. like we always say devotion but i like to say love because i think it's a more relatable part like your mom is doing that because she really loves yes. those gods you know like the same way she would take care of you or your brother or your father that's how she's taking care of the gods in her life and i think when we talk about religion a lot of times we talk about god fearing aspects like if i don't do this you know this will happen and all that stuff but what you show that i really love is building for the god loving space of saying that the same way you take care of your loved ones like people who believe in god people who do puja every day love their god you know um even when all the items that you use in puja it's like your skin care right like the same way that you clean yourself and then you take care of yourself and then you adorn yourself in the morning that's your puja process you clean your idols then you know you take care of them and then you adorn them finally with flowers and you know all of the other stuff the agarbattis and everything that you do uh, it can be as complicated or as simple as you want you can you know do all these different variations uh it's just an expression of your gratitude mm. and your love for that um and if we can make that journey a little bit easier a little bit simpler along the way um like why not right like even with these flowers for example it's an age old tradition yeah. but as soon as we started like we had so many people saying you know when i moved into my apartment or i moved to a new city i really had no way of getting these flowers and if you live in an apartment it's a little bit more hard yeah. to like you know get access to it and stuff so i'm so happy that you guys are letting me do my puja every day you know yeah. like letting me express what i feel for my god every day and giving me that time to like sit with myself yeah. and you know do my puja and everything so that was really wonderful and now we're kind of entering the rest of the puja space with our agarbattis and kumkum and ganga yeah. jal and all of that it's massive massive space but we hope to bring the same ethos to it mm-hmm. right like ganga jal that you is like an old old tradition yeah. can we make it fresh again and make you realize like why is water from the ganga so yeah. important you know like this idea in hindu mythology that water carries memory hmm. right like it remembers where it's come from and that's why ganga jal is ganga jal and rose water is rose water and stuff like that and um 
like you said, it can be a three step puja or a six step yes. puja. But the idea behind puja, like the word itself comes from pushpa and jap, right? So like flowers and some chanting, that is enough to just complete your puja. And yeah, if you can give all five of the elements, like you give kumkum for bumi and you give agarbatis for vayu and that's the whole idea, right? So the yeah. panch bhutas, if you offer it, which you can do in five minutes also. Yeah. Like, no, I think you have put it very beautifully that uh, it's it it's your relationship with God, how you, what kind of relationship you have. And it's all right if you skip the steps. Yeah. Uh, it's just that if you really want to do it or not and how much time you want to give it and yeah. if you're doing it from your heart or not. Yeah, I think, you know, each step in the puja process, uh, this might be a little bit like too into the technical details for some people, but I really find it beautiful because whether you do all the steps or not, the idea is when you give something from the earth, something from water, something from air and stuff, you're saying that we're all made of the same elements. And if I can see that in this idol or this photo frame, then hopefully I can see that in the people around me as well, right? That we're all made of the same things. And if you can treat your God so well, hopefully you can treat the people around you really well because you were all made of the same stuff. So I think overall it's a beautiful thing, like no matter how many steps you have in the process, if you can remember that core yeah. belief, I think that's really nice. I think it's uh, more about connecting with with someone supreme. Yeah, because I mean, in you need to find out some time from your day and when you are sitting quietly and you are connecting with that power and you are talking to yourself while talking yeah. to them. Yeah, because I think at the end of the day, like this is again very like Hindu philosophy based, but um, we believe that God is formless, right? Like a lot of other religions, Hinduism also believes that God is formless. We use the form as a way of, it's like baby steps towards yes. understanding the formless. Yes. Like we always say like, you know, when a kid is really young, they don't understand gravity. They don't understand weight distribution. You want to touch and feel. Yeah. So they like tumble themselves. They roll on the floor. They, you know, fall. They put their blocks together before they have the words for a concept like gravity or something like that, they're able to, through their senses, kind of understand it. That's what the puja process is, right? You're trying to understand a formless God through form. And that form is the idol that you're then sanctifying with other like elements and stuff like that. And if you can do that without doing the puja process, why not? Mm. Right? Like at the end of the day, you're just trying to understand like mm. that we're all a part of the broader thing. And yeah. And why flowers like is there anything special about flowers like mm -hmm. i have mentioned about the convenience but mm -hmm. is there anything else um why do we offer why flowers? do we do flowers or why do people why offer do, flowers yes why do people flower uh, offer flowers yeah to the words? um so like i said puja itself comes from the word pushpa and jap right um but at a broader level when you talk about hindu puja you talk about the panchabhutas so that's the five elements that people are made out of uh or the world is made out of and you have agni jal vayu bhumi which i think people are very familiar with but the fifth one is kind of the ineffable one uh, it's called akasha it's like the void or the life energy that you know kind of brings everything together flowers represent that in your puja so when you say bumi you're talking about kumkum turmeric etc vayu you're talking about your you know agarbatis etc jal whatever water you use ganga jal etc um agni is you know you camp for whatever you burn uh, but how do you represent that life element that you're offering to your god every day that's where the flowers and the fruits come in right both of those as the life elements and i think from a more practical perspective as well um, anytime you see fresh flowers somewhere, whether it's in their, in, in someone's hair or in their autos or in their house or office, what it means is that that person is going there every day to add beauty to that spot, right? Like a lot of my friends are like, haha, I have plastic flowers in my house. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, haha, that means you're not thinking about that space at mm -hmm. all. You know, Makes like a lot of sense. the whole beauty of fresh flowers is that they do die every day. And then you have to kind of keep going back yeah. there and saying, even if it's an ancestor's photo, right? You're saying this person is important enough to me that I'm showing up every day yes. and doing something special in that spot. That's what puja is as well, yeah. right? Like, you're, why are you doing agarbati every day? Yeah. It's because you're saying every day this person is special enough. Yeah. The same way that you would make breakfast for someone every day or you would say, you know, ask someone about their day every it's day. It's like being more grateful and uh, acknowledging things around you. 
yeah it's your daily check in yeah. right like i think as humans the most valuable thing that we have to offer is time out of our life right like our attention and our energy uh you giving that to your god or your puja or you know that that means you care about it a lot yes. that it matters a lot to you i think you also have an instagram page where you sp- uh post pictures whenever you spot uh i think a particular kind of flower uh we have a page called huvu finds where we do a lot of like nature foraging yeah. um i think that has been really fun actually because it's not so much about puja i know that we spoke a lot about it but huvu finds is more about being flower lovers uh it's actually curated by rohini kejriwal who runs the alipur post and i used to love her page it was all this art and poetry and then we said what can we do together and we said you know puja flowers are also traditional indian flowers hmm. you know they're just the local flowers that grow in india compared to your bouquet flowers yeah. which you have to import and stuff like that which my dad and my mom used to do and we were like if we can get people to be as excited about seeing the jasmine in the road and you know like all the local flowers that you see basically as they are about receiving a bouquet of flowers like it's so much more joy in your life right because now every time you're walking down the street you're like oh my god it's so pretty versus waiting for someone to bring you flowers that's how huvu find started um and for me i think it occupies a very similar space you know like if we're facilitating someone's puja that's wonderful if we're facilitating someone like going to kaban park every sunday and being like look at all these beautiful flowers yeah. i found that's also that same space in their life of like spending time with yourself and hopefully you know connecting with that aspect of yourself no i think it's similar with plants also people who love plants people who love flowers or nature they are uh, they're considered to be more kind because yeah. they are always very conscious of their surroundings and yeah. if if i have lots of plants in here and i will lo- I will always be very conscious if, like, nobody is dying, everyone is well <laughs> lit, and yeah. everyone is looking nice, feeling yeah. nice. Yeah. So it shows how kind you are, and how yeah. uh, compassionate you are, and how much you care about your surroundings and yeah. your people, your things. Yeah. So Ogao actually recently went through like a whole brand overhaul. The Ogao, they're a plant company and stuff like that, and I love their caption, which is. you know usually think like people grow plants but their thing is plants grow plants people, grow people. Yes. i loved that like i thought yes. it was a brilliant idea i think thought over design did it and they did such a wonderful job and i 100% agree like my grandmom was like really into gardening yeah. she loved her garden i think it was like as important to her as as his grandkids um and i saw that you know like the compassion and care and she would never throw out a single thing you know yeah. if there was a little bit of omelet left on the plate she'd be like my plants are going to love this yes. they're going to grow so yes. well because yes. of this so yeah it just makes you more attentive to the yes. world yes you become more kind and it's also like we have a very small kitchen garden mm-hmm. so we have got lemongrass and um, uh uh ajwain mm-hmm. everything there in the garden Yeah. very small balcony setup yeah. and if i am preparing kada for myself i have got cold and i want to prepare kada i'll um, have some ajwain leaves from my uh, from my place yeah. and i'll have some lemon grass and when then when you prepare the tea you are more conscious you are not yeah. just preparing tea you are so grateful yeah but kuch fris se nikal ke nahi dala hai you are thankful to the nature 100% ki ajwain yahan se aati hai yeah we I had like experience you have it yeah, makes you more kind 100% like we had this like mirchi plant at home and we had i think an eggplant plant and it was like oh my god it's coming it's coming it's coming and then they were like oh this is our eggplant yeah. and you know it was like such a feast in our house it's a tiny little yeah. thing <laughs> and you know my mom and my grandma probably spent so much more time and energy yeah. on it than just going and picking it up but it was so much more special like i said yes. like because they had invested all that time and energy and you also start respecting uh, people in general like uh, nobody even think about farmers uh, putting so much effort itna kheti karna mein ek matlab humne ek ek plant lagaya and we are so happy yeah. and we know all our effort yeah. what happens uh, when yeah. they have to do that kind of work for a year so we are more grateful as people we 100%. acknowledge everyone's effort and we are more kind to vegetable vendor and yeah wala. 100% like i remember my grandmom like i said loves gardening so i bought these like lotus uh like plants for her to plant and we were waiting and we were waiting and it took like a year for those yeah. lotuses to bloom and I, when it bloomed i remember i had to go to hyderabad the next day and i was yeah. like no i'm yeah. going to miss the <laughs> blooming of my lotuses and 
and then you know and then at huvu we get like thousand lotuses yes. every day and then you're like oh my god like who is growing these yes. you know they're so hard to get out and i mean that's kind of what started this whole journey for yashoda and myself like the idea came from her seeing my mom doing her puja but the business aspect of it of is this something that we can really solve for was when we realized that there's 40% wastage in this market which means that the farmer who has like 2 acres or whatever of land that he's literally throwing away almost 1 acre worth of crop just like that seeing our parents and the investment that they have in their farms and how attached they are i think that we were like that's unacceptable right like hmm. clearly something is very very broken yes. in this uh, supply chain um that's kind of what drew us to the whole thing of like no, yeah i think it's a great idea and <laughs> have huge respect for you guys building Thank this you. venture so one more question uh, there are people who already who always knew when they were kids or uh, when we are small we know what kind of um, profession we want to choose so there are people who say uh, i can't do a job i can't uh, you know make me khud ka boss hu main kisi ka employee nahi ban sakta that kind of attitude mm-hmm. and they they know that uh, they want to do uh something yeah. of their own so uh like at what point in time you decided that you wanted to uh, start your own business mm-hmm. because because for me it's different i never had any kind of ambition uh this ambition that mm-hmm. um i would have my own business one day uh everything changed for me after my marriage with siddhar because mm-hmm. he has been uh this person like super driven and uh, uh he would he had already decided that uh, once he grows up he, he'll have his own business and uh, like he was selling cards when he was small like i think 5 <laughs> 6 year old he yeah. was selling cards and doing all kind of crazy stuff a hustler from yes, birth yes yeah. yes but after my marriage with him things started changing for me also i also started figuring out ways to help him i like how can i add value to him yeah uh, how can i contribute uh, but doing a business was never on my mind it happened gradually mm-hmm. so how was it for you yeah um so it's a little funny like growing up like seeing my dad like you know and my mom both of them being entrepreneurs there's always like a thing in us also where we were like oh we have to grow up and do something of our own like you know we have to be entrepreneurs and uh, my dad's a leo i'm a leo so i was like oh so we're basically the same person and yeah. so of course i'm also going to be an amazing entrepreneur um and you know it was so wonderful like they they used to be on the covers of all these magazines and they used to have all this coverage and stuff like that and so i was like you know i want to be famous like i want to come in the newspaper as many times as my dad and more times than him and all that stuff but i think somewhere along the way like i kind of changed and i i used to do a lot of reading and writing in school and i used to be a journalist in school so then that was the path that i wanted to pursue um actually when i started college i wanted to be a philosophy major that quickly changed <laughs> that which is probably for the best and then i was into journalism pretty much till the end of my college career and i was like okay so i will be in the news more than my dad <laughs> one way or the other um it was actually my final year of college so in my third year of college uh, my dad had fallen a little bit ill uh, so yashoda graduated early and she came back and i took a leave of absence and i came back to india that's when both of us worked in our family business as well um uh, and then i went back to finish my graduation my last year and that's when yashoda had this idea i think having worked in our family business for that brief amount of time it showed me how interesting business could be mm-hmm. and how it could engage every aspect of your brain and i remember in my final year you know i was like okay like now i'll look for jobs and stuff and i went to the career center and i took their test that they give you and the results were like the career for you is like you love to learn so you should be a student and i was like what kind of spam is this like you just want me to be a student for the rest of my life but now looking back i'm yeah. like yeah you know like that's what being an entrepreneur is yes. like you're every- learning all the time all the time and there's your job no is playbook yeah your job is always changing you always feel like you know there's something else that you have to do yeah. that you're not currently doing and you're making yourself redundant all the time so i think both of those factors really helped and then when yashoda called and she was like till then i was helping her as a sister and you know i was doing the website and photos and stuff like that and then she called and she said why don't you come back and why don't you join me and i was like 
okay cool <laughs> so yeah i mean it was as simple and i guess as long of a journey as that um it was like a whole lifetime leading to like that split decision and i actually came back like she got you into the business yeah so i was supposed to graduate june of 2019 i came back to india f- march of 2019 so month after she had kind of started already and yeah there's been no looking back so you guys are still running your family business and you're also running this separately uh no so my parents take care of the family business okay. we just work there for for yashta i think it was about 2 years that she worked there for me it was like less than a year um and yeah is there any relationship between these two businesses or these are two different businesses two different legal entities everything a lot of people assume we get our flowers from our parents but they actually do long stem roses mm. uh we only work with short stem puja flowers uh they would never sell to us because our flowers are like 1 rupee per stem and theirs are like 22 rupees per stem wow. so yeah there's no um business relationship but obviously like we take a lot of advice from our parents some solicited some unsolicited but um overall it's amazing like i think there's so many times that we're like what do we do what do we do what do we do and we're at the dining table and my parents are like this is what you have to do because they're like punters in the floriculture mm-hmm. field and we keep forgetting that mm-hmm. um so i wouldn't say there's no relationship there's a lot of input from their side but there is no business relationship i know it it has its own advantages and disadvantages when you your parents are you know they are also running a business and they are yeah. already well established and yeah. you have just started how do you see it yeah 100% like i remember when we started my mom would it, it's annoying or it's like how's it? it it it's both so on one side a lot of people when we started i remember there was this one particular person and i would meet him at all these startup events and he would be like oh you're building a lifestyle business right like this is not a venture business right and it would like really irritate me so much because it was our first year we didn't have any numbers to back yeah. us up but i was like how can you just assume that yes. this is going to be a small business right yes. just cuz he didn't understand the concept um but you know at home we always had that thing of like what's next and as kids we always had that thing of like even selling roses can be a global business and yes. it can really take you to big places so that way i think having our parents was like a great help because we mm-hmm. knew how big of a business flowers mm-hmm. can be what anything can be if you do it well enough right mm-hmm. um and they always kind of push us like if the whole world is like oh my god good job yeah. my parents will be like good job what's next you know like yeah. that's their mentality um but there was always uh, this clarity uh, because first time entrepreneurs always struggle with this thing that uh, what's the market size mhm yeah so i think you had this clarity thanks to your parents that market size is not small yeah and i think more than understanding the marketing market size which you know a little bit was there because of them and floriculture and stuff knowing how to operate in uncertainty was i think the biggest gift they gave us because when they started even the floriculture the gifting floriculture side was very new and you know like my dad was one of the first people to export flowers out of bangalore like the first flight to be chartered for roses out of bangalore was from my dad and stuff um which is really really cool and he taught us like most people will not understand what it takes to build a big business and they'll think that you know a certain report or something like that can mm-hmm. help you do that but mm-hmm. it, it, like It, there is a huge market if you're willing to build for it right and you can create that market for yourself as well and actually in india if you look at it the puja flower market is three times bigger than the bouquet flower market which a lot of people don't realize so we're like i'm not worried about market size you know like there are huge giants just in the bouquet flower industry uh so that was one big thing uh having them at home but definitely when we started my mom would be like for a 10 rupee packet you guys are waking up at 4 a.m every day mm-hmm. and we'd be like yes ma we are waking up for a 10 rupee packet um but it also pushed us right to do more scalable things because yeah. i think otherwise we would have gotten so obsessed with each and every single aspect of it that she was like you guys earned 30 rupees today and we were like yes we know that so what was their reaction when they showed us shared the initial idea with them that uh, this yeah. is my idea and we want to sell flowers in this way and the focus is to you know uh, reduce the reduce the wastage and increase the Uh, yeah. life of flowers like what was their reaction they were super excited right like i mean they even, believed in the idea yeah i mean that's the thing about they, they were not worried as parents ki um 
No, I mean, I think with my parents, that's the thing. Like, they're complicated. They're both yeah. excited for us. And they're always like, okay, guys, but like, what's happening type of thing. So they were very excited. They were very supportive. Like, you know, in the beginning, all of our photo shoots, I actually, honestly, to this day also, most of our photo shoots are in my mom's puja room. Uh, like, we did some big photo shoots and we were like, why get a model? We'll use my mom. You know, she does puja mm -hmm. every day and stuff. So, yeah, like that way, they're very, very supportive. My dad goes to any city he goes to, he goes to the flower market and he'll like live stream his experience to us. So they're very supportive, uh, but they back up that support with like a lot of push to us as well. Right. And we I, I think it works perfectly because I think for a lot of women, especially like you, um, there's a term for it. It's like the bigotry of low expectations where it's like people are like, oh, nice, you're doing this thing. It's nice. It's a small hobby that you're doing type of thing. Our parents never gave us that comfort. They were like, whatever you do, you have to do it really, really well. And you have to do it to the best of your capability. Hmm. Not the best in the world, but they're like the best of your capability. But they believe we're capable of the world. <laughs> so then it ends up pushing us quite a bit. Uh, yeah, so I think both of those work things worked in conjunction. Like every time she was saying like, oh, you only earned 50 rupees today. It was because she believed we could do so much more than that. And I think that was invaluable. So, Ria, if you uh, have to share one piece of advice that your parents shared with you that you think can add value to our audience also, if you can share that advice. Yeah, they give us so much advice. <laughs> I know it's a difficult yeah. question. Um, actually, this is something that my dad didn't tell me. He told Yashoda, but I was in the car, so I overheard it and I really loved it. Um, he was talking about some idea, like some random idea that had nothing to do with floriculture. And we were like, okay, like you have a running business. Why do you keep thinking of these new business ideas all the time? And he's like, you know, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, your job is to create value, like create social value, not to create profits or money or jobs or any of that stuff to create social value. And that social value can sometimes be jobs. Sometimes it can be profit. Sometimes it can be a service or a product that you're offering. And so it's your job to always be thinking about this, like, how do I create more social value? Um, and I think that has always really stuck yes. with me as a as a great piece of advice for a business, but also as a great way of living your life, like of thinking about how you can create social value in different mm. ways. Um, yeah, I think that's the best piece. And I think you and Yashoda both took it very seriously and they're building Hovu and it's a big relief for, uh, you know, flower vendors if they can, if uh, the life of flowers is increased. We hope so. Yeah. I mean, I think that because of the way that he kind of framed that, we never thought of middlemen or distributors or anyone as people to cut out of the ecosystem. And it was more about how can we add value to each person in that ecosystem? Because if they're not all on board, like nobody knows these flowers as well as the lady in that flower market, mm. right? Or the farmer who's selling it or the middleman who's been trading it his entire life. So how do you add value to that ecosystem and become a part of it um, while hopefully changing the way that it works overall and disrupting it, I think has been a very interesting question for us. And I think that probably makes you last much longer in that industry as well, because every person can see the value that you're mm -hmm. adding. We're nowhere where we want to be in terms of reaching all of these people. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we're just starting our journey and that's fun. No, uh, all the best to you and Ashoda. I am 100% sure that you guys will do great. Thank you so much. And I think Piyush and Aman have invested in Hobu, right? So yeah, we got a deal from both of them through yeah. Shark Tank. Yeah. They both are based in Delhi, right? Yeah, they are very far away. So you'll have to travel to Delhi to meet them or... Yeah, it's very funny actually. Our investors, Sauce VC, they're our fund. They're also based in Delhi. So we're like, there's some reason that, you know, yeah. Bangalore is supposed to be the startup ecosystem. I think you are now building in uh, Delhi. Yeah, that's right. So we're, we're starting yeah. our new warehouse there and stuff like that. So we're like, it's so funny. There's so much pull from Delhi. Mm. We're like, isn't Bangalore the startup yeah, hub? Yeah. Like, but we're traveling all the time. So yeah. So Siddharth, who is also my husband and he's also my co-founder, he's like a complete go-getter, mm -hmm. like more driven, more passionate. And he wouldn't, if he has got any idea, he wouldn't wait for any kind of validation. He'll just start executing and then he'll wait for the results. And then he only will decide if he is, uh, this is the right thing to do or he should be doing it or not. So he doesn't seek for validation. Uh, I am complete opposite. I am more 
process oriented i believe in planning and uh, sometimes uh, that's that that doesn't work out for me and uh, I, i look for perfection in things like mm-hmm. we are complete opposites so how is your relationship with your sister like uh, what's your role and what's her role and how do you Uh, complement each other yeah we're also complete opposites i would say um yashoda is the ceo so she takes care of operations and finances uh, i'm cto so i take care of the tech and the marketing side of things um and yeah i mean every way possible like she's a morning person i'm a night person like every single time we have a new market idea we both are like even when we agree we agree in different ways we're like yeah we agree we should do this but your reasons for doing it are different from mine yeah. but it's been great cuz then cuz we have the 25 years or 26 years whatever of experience of seeing the other person be proven right and also like having these discussions our entire life i we're okay with trying out the other person's idea and we always say like okay let's set a certain time frame let's set the parameters like you get a 5 lakh budget or a 5000 budget or whatever it is to try out your idea your way tell me what you need from me and then we'll come back and we'll see the results and sometimes the answer is yes sometimes the answer is no sometimes it's okay this worked but this didn't so let's change it and stuff like that uh but i think that's been really great i think if both of us agreed on everything all the time uh there would be no point of having yeah. both of us there like because we have these different perspectives it works and we really complement each other's strengths and weaknesses i think uh like she's great with people i love to work by myself i don't like to work with people um and just a bunch of other things like she's really good at like responding like mm-hmm. right on time takes me like 3 to 5 business days to just like open my whatsapp and respond to people um so i'm very lucky to be building with her Like um, she is more focused on building building the team connecting mm-hmm. with investors yeah so she i mean running the trains on time is such a big part of what we do uh because it's daily puja yeah. flowers it's perishable business uh i think it would be impossible to do that without her like she actually has the personality for that industry i do not have the personality for it um but it works out well cuz then we can like try new things like i can do that with my time and i have so much fun and i feel so bad sometimes cuz i'm like my job is so fun yeah <laughs> but um you it's, feel like working sometimes i literally feel like i'm not working yeah. cuz then i'm like I can i'm like making holy this. colors and then you know i'm like smelling agarbattis yeah. and i'm like oh this smells beautiful and she's like in meetings the whole day um but i think it complements each other at the end of the day like we're able to do new things and then still have yeah. our co business run really well and I think zooming in and zooming out as yeah. individual founders is important but then as a team we kind of help each other do that as well cuz one person is zoomed out one person is zoomed in on different aspects of the business um and I think just like a deep level of trust like I think even on the days where we don't get along with each other when things are going bad and all of that stuff knowing that the other person wants what's best for the company and for you yeah um I mean it's it's hard to uh, I mean I think that's why so many spouses and siblings yeah. start up together right and no I think this is the first um, episode I am hosting yeah. and uh, before this I would help Siddharth and now that we have Arvind and Ram so it's not that kind of work mm. but earlier I would bring coffee tea or mm. water when we are recording and I would help Arvind with the setup and today I was feeling uh, a bit uh, uh, unemployed or like <laughs> I'm not doing anything I'm not adding value uh, I'm just sitting there and I have also got cold so I was thinking let's just save my energy yeah. and I was trying to move things then I would control myself no 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 yeah. today you don't have to do that let's yeah. just save your energy because you will be speaking for the next one hour so and mm. not well so Yeah, I think a big part of the founder journey is making yourself redundant all the time. You don't feel relevant. I don't know. Yeah. By the end of the day, I am so exhausted. Uh I have no fixed timings. I would wake up and Kabir is already there. Like yeah. Kabir is, is more alive, more <laughs> like uh, yeah. puri senses uski chal rahi hain. Yeah. my day starts with kabir and uh, around 8 he, i send him to school and then after that i got one hour to get ready because it's a home office and i want to be ready before uh, these guys come uh, so i get ready and then i work till 5 6 and up like 
उससे ज्यादा कबीर को टॉलरेट नहीं होता है एंड ही विल स्टार्ट मेकिंग ऑल काइंड ऑफ नॉइजेस एंड बाय द बाय नाइन टेन इलेवन आई एम सो एग्जॉस्टेड बट आई हैव टू काउंट माई वर्क लाइक वॉट डिड आई डू टूडे डिड आई एड वैल्यू डिड आई कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टूडे सो यू हैव दैट काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन हंड्रेड परसेंट लाइक दैट इम्पोस्टर सिंड्रोम इज ऑलवेज देर एंड फीलिंग दैट्स आई आई मीन इट्स ऑलवेज नाइस वन यू मेक योर सेल्फ रिडांडेंट एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट बट समटाइम्स इज ऑल्सो सच अ जारिंग फीलिंग बिकॉज you know like up till the last festival um you know our warehouse was in the basement of our home so it was like in the night shift it was us who were in the night shift and i would be running the so because i'm cto i also help in i develop the machinery that we use for the flower packing and stuff and when the machines first came nobody wanted to use it cuz nobody understood how they worked uh cuz there's no machine operators for this particular machine cuz this machine has never existed before right so i would go and run the machines and this festival season i i was in the warehouse and i was telling one of the supervisors you know like i was like okay you go take your tea break i'll run the machine and she was like no ma'am it's very difficult you won't be yeah. able to do it she's new so she was like it's very difficult ma'am you won't be able to do yeah. it i'll do it it's okay it's fine yeah. and i was like um i mean this machine i was like i used to run this machine for like 8 hours yeah. it's okay like go take a break and come but then it also is wonderful right like yeah. your organization has grown so much beyond you like it's good that you're not the person manning the wheel yeah. at every single station yeah. and uh, yeah there were some barcodes or something that had to be changed so i was sitting down to do it and they were like ma'am ma'am don't touch the files they'll yeah. get spoiled and i was like i made these files <laughs> i started this you know but i was it's a wonderful style I think so being an entrepreneur you have to do so many things and yeah. then teams comes up so yeah. uh, you also want to stay relevant so you have to keep finding new things to work yeah, on yeah. and uh, what are the loopholes yeah no 100% and i think that has been a big part of yashoda and my journey yeah. this year because yeah. finally we feel like the organization is at a place where you know ops are able to run by themselves we've been able to like really set sops for everything so now it's like what next you know what yeah. else can we explore like the rest of the puja basket new cities new yeah. countries maybe like new services that we can offer like content and all of that stuff um but you know at the same time like you grow so attached to everything yeah. that you've done like every time i go to the warehouse i'm like the table should be like this and yeah. the crates should be like this and they're like leave us alone we do yeah. this every day and i was yeah. like but you know designing these tables yeah. for example was a big thing you yeah. know when we did it we were like yeah. oh we're going to buy yellow tables they're going to have places for crates everything was done with so much love yeah. um but then you have to kind of hand it off to your yeah. team and you know that they're going to take good care yeah. of it so i think yeah. something similar happened yesterday only so ram came to me and uh, so uh, just one year back uh, to this day i told sadhar that uh, you have got a fund for yourself and you are so much focused on fund what's my job i'm not even on camera recording the podcast and i don't i am constantly questioning myself what's my role how am i contributing am i really adding value or anyone can do this job it's not uh, nothing major is happening from my side and uh, so ab bas ek saal aur dena hai agar mere numbers improve nahi hue meri team achhi nahi bani mere podcast pe kuch growth nahi hua i leave this job mm-hmm. aap kisi aur se kara lena <laughs> i'll better take up a job so i feel more acknowledged and respected in house also so because i am drawing salary also yeah. and i am helping everyone with money also yeah. so i am totally dependent on you and uh, i get sponsor money but i spend all of all of that money in building studio or buying new things yeah. so i'll just give one more year uh, so i was more focused in the last one year i we built the studio bought these fancy equipments and uh, uh, hired arvin and hired uh, built our team and then yesterday ram came to my room and he was like uh, and i was al- already very much focused on the process ki yaar kisi ek bande ke thoda sa idhar udhar hone pe aisa nahi hona chahiye ki yaar we are in panic state ki mm. aap kaise kare to we should have a proper process uh, around everything we do so ram came to me yesterday and he was like uh, nancy ab to आपके बिना भी आराम से पॉडकास्ट हो सकता है आपकी इतनी जरूरत है नहीं यहाँ पे एंड शॉर्ट वॉट सब हो जाएगा शॉर्ट रेडी है कवर फोटो रेडी है पॉडकास्ट आज हो जाएगा मैं आज रुक रहा हूँ लेट और नवल भी है हम लोग मिलके कर लेंगे आप जाके आपको जुकाम हो रहा है यू टेक रेस्ट आपके बिना आराम से हो सकता है आई वॉज इन शॉक इट वॉज अ हैप्पी शॉक आई वॉज लाइक आई 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 नाउ आई नीड टू फाइंड आउट 
different ways yeah. to stay relevant in this yeah. company <laughs> yeah yeah no 100% i know for every festival for example you know you have to have night shifts during festival yeah. times and i would always be like okay i'll do the night shift you guys do the morning shift and i remember this festival season i was like okay night shift i'll do yeah. and my warehouse manager was like no you go home i'll do it yeah. then the next day you know the next day i was like okay today i'll do night shift and they were like no logistics manager will do it yeah. and i was like someone let me do it like i love this company yeah. like i want to be here and they were like go home and so then you have to find other things to do so then i was like okay you know i'll send analysis and i'll critique whatever you guys are doing right now um but yeah i guess that's part of it and riya it's been more than four and a half years for, for you now, guys yeah. uh, building hobo and you guys started uh, from bangalore right yes that and right. bangalore has all kind of charm but we have so much difficulty also operating from the city traffic mainly yeah. for me because <laughs> yeah. our guests travel to our studio and yeah they have one or the other example to number one yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, because we run this podcast and we have an audience, and we want to share this message to anyone who is concerned, who can you know bring a change, who has the power uh, to know what's actually bothering uh, business owners, what's what's affecting their business. So, if you can share one or two challenges you have mm -hmm. uh, uh, running your business in Bangalore, mm -hmm. what 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 would be that challenge? Hmm, that's a great question. um i'm a first time founder and i've only ever worked out of bangalore of course yeah. we travel to our other cities we have offices in hyderabad and mumbai as well so i don't know if i'm the best person to answer this question i honestly love working in bangalore yeah. probably because i grew up here um i live in north bangalore so definitely i'll say hebal flyover is the biggest villain in my life It dictates my day essentially yeah. um but yeah traffic i think everyone will complain about um i think traffic yeah i yeah hebal flyover is the one point of traffic that i mean apart from that i'm actually okay like i think that's the one bottleneck that's really hard to get out of but if you can get out of it it's okay um yeah i feel like a teacher's pet but i can't think of anything <laughs> bad to say about bangalore yeah. honestly love it like i feel like the community is so great yeah. and like you know every for business uh, it's a great city but yeah the population is increasing the a lot of migration is happening and we don't have proper infrastructure here yeah so it, maybe it, everything is adding up to yeah probably traffic is the biggest yeah. thing but yeah i grew up in bangalore so like yeah. anytime i go to a new city i'm like i just want to go back yeah, yeah. like i remember when i joined college the biggest tip yashoda gave me she was like check the weather app every day yeah. and i was like what a weird thing to say but then i realized like growing up in bangalore you never check the weather cuz yeah. you're like it's yeah. always perfect and then in california which is also known for its perfect weather i would like be freezing or i'd be sweating yeah. cuz like i didn't dress for the day so honestly i'm really spoiled it, like i can't it's also uh, a good um, kind of weather for your business or yeah. it'll be challenging for you to do this business in delhi like Yeah, definitely. Bangalore is a great place to start because it's kind of a floriculture hub in that way. A lot of our main flowers, roses and sevanti are grown here. Uh and yeah, definitely the temple. So we've actually supplied to Delhi quite a bit before during the festivals especially. That's definitely a challenge like um yeah, the extreme heat, extreme cold. Like mm -hmm. that fluctuation also can actually affect flowers a lot. Um so yeah. Bangalore is the largest uh, producer of roses. Um I think bouquet roses uh bangalore and pune together are huge producers in india some of it has actually grown in the north also uh for our puja flowers roses and sevanti a big part of it does actually come from karnataka i won't say bangalore specifically mm -hmm. but lotus comes from kerala and all of that stuff so it's it's very distributed like jasmine and everything they come from different parts of the country marigold again is very much in the north no um so we kind of always worked with the pan india supply chain but being in bangalore made it definitely much easier uh because the cold varieties are kind of grown here and the temperature is easier and all of that so all these flowers i think five or seven types of flowers uh who would deals with for puja flowers mainly so they are all grown in karnataka so we actually do around like 12 different varieties of flowers and greens together like your betta leaves bil patra all of that stuff um i would say like the three largest are sevanti roses and marigold those are grown in bangalore near bangalore uh the rest of the varieties do come from all over but um 
yeah i mean that way like working with that supply chain all over india was never a huge challenge for us mm-hmm. because of our background i think like that floriculture mm-hmm. and agriculture side we actually came in being very comfortable with having worked with you know the international supply yeah. chains and stuff like that um it was the rest of the how do we distribute it mm-hmm. you know like you said you order from zepto yeah. right like how do we get ourselves mm-hmm. on zepto and how do we get to your home in 10 minutes when you need it i think that was more of the challenging bit yeah but dealing with flower varieties like that's yeah. one thing our parents unconsciously trained us for our whole lives yeah and uh, i know you're very young oh, for this question <laughs> i'm only 2 years younger than you so i'm not old yeah, yeah that's also true <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> yeah so uh but it's been four and a half years building this business and uh, you have been uh, you have lived outside india lot of experiences you have had uh, what's the lowest mom what was the lowest moment for you in life like that really taught you something solid about life in life um this is a great question yeah <laughs> um i mean i think overall probably the lowest moment would be uh last year our grandmom actually passed away um and like sh- she actually my granddad passed away the year i was 196 so she's lived with us our whole mm-hmm. life and you know when i was a kid i would tell everyone i was like i have two moms and they would be like what <laughs> and then my mom would be like it's her grandmother it's her yeah. grandmother mm-hmm. so i was very close to her so i think uh she struggled with cancer for a bit and then we lost her which was definitely difficult um and so like she passed away in june and september is when the shark tank shooting happened right so that was when we were going through the whole application process mm-hmm. and this is something that i don't tell everyone but you know there was a part of the process where we were like we're going to drop out we're not going to do shark tank cuz they were calling us every day for the audition videos and stuff and i was like i can't do it right now like this week is not possible for me to do then finally i had to tell them i was like i had a death in my family i'm not shooting you know trailer or anything right now uh but they were very very understanding and they were like okay like you know we'll give you a little bit of time they extended the timeline for us and stuff like that um so that was definitely hard but i would say it was amazing to have those 6 months with her when we kind of knew that she was kind of struggling with it cuz we made the most of it like we literally every single day like my uncle my aunt like our entire family was together with her all the time uh and then also coming out of it having work as a release was in a way a really good thing like our life was so full at that point of time with huvu and shark tank and this and that and like you said you know we we get to be a part of so many startup mm-hmm. events and stuff like that that i think we just like fell into work and then now one year later we're like how were we doing that like two weeks after this mm. huge thing happened in our house and stuff like that so i think that was definitely like the lowest point but also something that brought our family together a lot i'm really sorry to hear about thank you and uh, as the business grows uh our network grows like expands but uh friendships and close uh, network it it gets thoda kam ho jata hai like we have fewer friends when we are building a business because our priorities are different and uh, yeah. we can't be available to everyone all the time mm-hmm. we have to uh, you know we have to learn uh, saying no yeah. most of the time yeah. that uh, acha theek hai kal milna hai kal to mushkil hai kal mera yeah. ye kaam hai and then thoda 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 karke you start uh, going away from your you know yeah. people and then you have to you know make a new circle with same people only but who respect your work and uh, who you can who can fit into the new life you are living mm-hmm. so how's that thing for you like mm-hmm. how's your relationship with your friends and what has changed mm-hmm. what's the same yeah um i would say with my college friends like i think we were all workaholics even in college so that didn't change it's definitely hard being far away from them but overall i mean i think we've kept in touch um it was definitely weird moving back to bangalore where i grew up and kind of reconnecting with a lot of uh my school friends and people that i've known for a really long time uh especially cuz when i first came back which was in my third year of college all, obviously all my friends were also like just in college or just finishing up and stuff like that and i was working in our family business and um obviously the startup journey is very hard but my dad is a incredible boss also a very hard working boss and like you know 
sa- Sunday, like Saturday. It doesn't matter to him. He's always yeah. working, and therefore we are always working because you're living with your boss. He's always working. And I remember, like my friends, you know, would meet like on a Wednesday or a Thursday or something, and I was like, "How are you guys having yeah. fun on a weekday? Like this does not make sense." But it makes sense because they were twenty two at the time, right? Um, that was definitely a difficult thing to be like. Do you miss that life? I mean, I never had that life because I yeah. came. I my college was so intense. Like we yeah. were working all the time, and, and you. I think you had already. uh by the time you finished your college you had already joined the family business because yeah so in my third year i didn't really have a summer i was like working with my parents mm-hmm. and stuff like that and then i would always everyone would be like let's go out and i'd be like i'm in ethiopia actually so then yeah. i could not do that and then when i came back from college in 2019 like during my graduation time as well it was huwu right and who was crazy in the first year obviously because okay. we were doing our own deliveries and we did about 1500 deliveries every day within the 4 to 5 a.m. slots so like many phone calls like he's left it on the second floor i'm on the third floor or like oh he's left it at my neighbor's house that mm. person is over you were also so handling the customer we support. were doing the and i mean we had customer service but like as founders you are yeah. you know very much on the front lines in the first year um so it's definitely like weird i would definitely be like i also want to go like yeah. chill <laughs> um but you know your friends like you realize that supporting you is not the friends who put up a post when you do really well or who are like oh my god i'm so excited for you yeah. it's the people who understand like why you're showing up like 2 hours late why you look dead why you're in your office kurta when everyone yeah. else is like you know and one of my friends is like oh you look like an auntie and i was like i am an auntie <laughs> like there's nothing i can do about it if um, you were an aunt- auntie who am i no when you know like at that point in time he's like okay. You're dressing like an auntie. You're behaving yeah. like an auntie, and I'm like, I am an auntie. Yeah. Like this is who I am now. Deal with it. But they did deal with it, right? Yeah. And th- I think those are the friendships that last. And uh, something that's been really great is having friends who are slightly older, also. Yeah. Uh, like a lot of my friends, I would say, are like in their thirties and stuff like that. That always helped because so you know, they, they come from this business side of things, or yeah, just like I, I mean, maybe because of Yashoda being slightly older, I yeah. ran into them, but also like from. like family friends or like the business like the startup people system connect more with the slightly older people i think different people bring out different sides of you so I, i'm definitely still really close to the people that i grew up with and they bring out a very different side of me which i'm grateful for like on the weekends i don't want to be talking about like the stock market and all of that stuff although my friends have started talking about that and i'm like guys no let's not do that um but it's also nice to be friends with people who are slightly older who are building their own businesses who are dealing with all of those aspects of life because then i don't feel crazy and yeah. you know they're like oh my intern quit and blah 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 and i'm like same you know yeah. it's great to have those conversations so yeah i think everyone just brings out a different side of you and um yeah it, there was a point in time in my life when i stopped connecting with my uh, batchmates or classmates uh i was feel i was already feeling so old mm-hmm. i would be so much more comfortable with siddharth's friends yeah so all all of siddharth's friends are now my friends mm-hmm. and i was only 23 23 and uh, 22 23 and uh, they were become, becoming parents because siddharth is 7 8 year old yeah yeah uh, but i uh, like with time because of uh, our business we were running the business together and we were having those kind of conversations when we were uh, uh, together so i started connecting with more with siddharth's friend yeah. and uh, i would i wouldn't connect with my set of people ki i don't want to talk about breakups i don't want to talk about boyfriends yeah. uh, um, maybe i'm more interested in um, maybe uh, like what's happening in family side yeah. so no i think that definitely happens and actually there was a point where like even our parents friends like we would spend so much time talking to them cuz we'd be like auntie what pujas do you do and yeah. what do you do and all that stuff and uh, obviously my dad's friends as well about business and i remember there was one point when one of my dad's best friends his name is sunil uncle and our whole life he would come home and hang out with us and all of that stuff but sometime he came home and my dad was like oh nice you're here like what's up and he's like i came to meet ria like i'm going to talk to her <laughs> and we like were chatting cuz yeah. he does a lot of tech stuff as well. And uh, so that was nice. You know, I think it's always nice to have that. But like I said, I think different friends bring out different sides of you and I think a big learning has been that 
having friends who have been older has been great for the professional side and lifestyle and all of that stuff but having my friends who are a little bit younger also forces me to be like okay i should act my age you know like i shouldn't be like sleepy at 10 pm sometimes like not always but like sometimes it's okay to do that and be silly or whatever it is also so yeah i think i value both and i think it's nice to have people who've known you for a really long time yeah. and who like to see that change in you right yeah. like my friends like are the biggest supporters yeah. in the way that it's a very small way right like where you know when everyone's like in at 2 a.m in the morning whatever they'll all be like hoo hoo like yeah. they'll be like yay and all of that stuff and i remember i was visiting a few of my friends in delhi and i had all of these air fresheners in my bag because i was like giving them to auto drivers because we were launching in the city oh it was mumbai sorry we were launching in mumbai and i was doing this and I, I all D2C founders do yeah. that. Like they keep <laughs> yeah. distributing. <laughs> Anytime I take a cab, I'm like, you want an air freshener? And I give it to them. <laughs> and, um, and it's a Lakshmi air freshener, so they can never throw it out because it's a God's image. <laughs> like they'll always keep it up. And I was a little bit ashamed of doing it in front of my friends. Yeah. But then he, my, one of my friends opened my bag and he's like, what is all this? And then I was like, yeah, this is what I'm doing. And the whole night, he was like, Bhaiya, air freshener chahiye. And I was like, so wonderful, you know, like, um, yeah, I would never do without that. So I think even though yeah. we're in different phases of our lives, maybe um, it's been really valuable to have them as well. And sometimes I think it's good to be like, if someone is like, oh, I had a breakup, I had this and all yeah, that stuff. Right. It's sometimes good to be like, these are problems too, you know, like yeah. maybe this will distract me from the other stuff that's going on. Yeah. So yeah. that's really funny. Yeah. I'll always remember this. Example. Yeah. I also, uh, we also give out, this probably won't be aired, but uh, we also give out matchboxes as goodies. And as soon as my friends found out, they were like, dude, give me, <laughs> you know, how many people use matchboxes around me? And I was like, okay, like different TG, but makes sense. Yeah. And they also have Lakshmi. Uh... No, no, they don't have God pictures, luckily, because we know people throw them. But yeah, I'm sure like any pub in Bangalore, if you go, at least one smoker will have yeah. Huvu matchboxes with them. Wow. So yeah, I don't know if it's doing any good marketing wise. But, yeah. Nice. And uh, one more different question I have for you. And this is the last question. Mm -hmm. uh, we know as uh, women founders that a lot of a lot has changed. Uh, a lot of things we have progressed society has progressed and things are uh, better now easier now but uh, how do you see it like being a woman in the business mm -hmm. how, how's your experience mm -hmm. anything you think um, like we should change or we should evolve or any kind of behavior you have noticed mm -hmm. um yeah Actually, honestly, me and Yashoda get this question fairly often and yeah. we always... I know, I know it's it's a very common question and uh, I was also thinking uh, till this point in time that we shouldn't be asking this question. No, because it's a it's, valid one. Yeah, because a lot of people watch this podcast and I feel small things make big difference, right? Uh, so th there is this influencer and he posted one story on Instagram. Uh, the baby was a baby was crying in the background and he was making noises and that was something that um, I didn't like mm. because uh, I feel that people should have more empathy and yeah. uh, if he's not comfortable that mother may feel more um, awkward and, yeah. or like she's causing some kind of trouble so yeah. these small behavior changes makes a lot of difference so if our audience uh, listen uh, women founders or these mothers answering their struggles yeah. and if they can change something they can yeah. make a small difference in their behavior it can uh, you know no, 100%. make a big difference I, I think it's a very valid question and you're absolutely right right like even what you said about like babies and stuff I remember seeing a post recently or like it was something and it was like if you're in your late 20s unless there is a close family member who has a young child yeah you're never interacting with yes. young people, right? And same can be said maybe for people who are really old, you know, if your parents are not in that age group. And we talk a lot about diversity and of course yeah. it's very important, but it's not just like ethnic or racial, uh, racial diversity, right? It's also age wise. Like, do you have empathy for people across age groups and yeah. stuff like that? I definitely understand when people are like, I mean, me too, I would prefer to not have a baby crying next to me on a flight. Yeah, yeah. Does that mean that I can ask for baby free? Yeah 
places in public life like maybe to a point but maybe not beyond that because at the end of the day we all share this society yeah. right like you said the mother and the child also have a place to play so i definitely agree with that um the reason i said it's a great it's an interesting question for us is that we feel very lucky because i think a lot of um the way that we grew up and the environment in which we grew up was so different from other female founders uh recently we were on a panel at IBM and Diksha Pandey who's the founder of Samosa Party was also on it and you know she was talking about you know growing up in a small town and like becoming a founder and being kind of like you know one of the first people like from her space to do that or even be the first people in first woman in hospitality you know in the Oberoi group like and how few of them they are and that's amazing right like I, i love hearing stories like that and it's so different from our story because like i said our parents were always like of course you're going to be entrepreneurs like what else are you going to do uh even when i wanted to be a journalist they were like yeah she'll be a journalist and an entrepreneur but she you know so that we were very lucky and mm-hmm. not just our parents right like even the schools that we went to we were always given i remember i was never in class because i was always some club or some mm-hmm. competition or something like we were given so many leadership positions as kids we were given so much importance in the classroom and you know i remember my male friends would be like can you please go argue for marks from my paper if she thinks yeah. it's your paper she'll give more marks you know like we never felt that we were lesser than anybody else and uh with three girls right with three sisters and so many times in parties and you'll never expect it like it'll be from the highest most sophisticated person they'd be like three daughters like what like they're so shocked yeah. you know uh, and our parents would be like yeah three daughters and i could see that anger in their eyes cuz they were like why not you know like why can't my daughters mm. do something or like why wouldn't they run the family business why wouldn't they kind of take yeah. over so we're very lucky in that sense and even coming back and starting we had so much support like from our family from our extended family our friends yeah. like i said like a lot of my friends like my a lot of my male friends as well were so excited when we started up and they asked really tough questions right like yeah. i think that always shows a lot of support when they're yeah. like how does a 10 rupee packet make sense or like yeah. how are you guys doing this and stuff like that that made me realize that they actually take what i do seriously yeah. and it's not just a small thing Um so all of those ways we've been very lucky I think structurally a lot has changed I think we get to be a part of a lot of cool conversations mm-hmm. as women founders which has been absolutely amazing we've been in rooms at tables with people that we would have never dreamt of meeting yeah. so early on in our careers because we're women founders and because they are making an effort to bring that in a lot of amazing programs and stuff like that there is of course a few structural things uh like I said you know when I've suddenly went to a flower market in you know Delhi and I was like I'm the only woman yeah. here like what's going on uh or when we were developing our machines I would always take my dad or like my driver inside with me just so they would like start talking to us and then I would step in you know uh and that's something our mom taught us because she was working like in from the 90s yeah. onwards and she was always like you know that first 5 minutes mhm is you somehow have to get through the door you know like you have to push it open and then after that it's up to you like if mm. you actually have content if you have mm. intelligence you have this like if that person mm. like is smart enough and they're worth doing business they'll pick it up right regardless of your gender because everyone loves money they yeah. they want to make money at the end of the day so that i think has been important um one weird thing that this I actually i mentioned a lot because i think it's really weird and i think it should change is that to this day women can't get vehicle loans which is fairly important for companies right capital loans yeah. essentially unless i mean this is an informal rule but you need to have like your father or your husband like as a guarantor on the loan which i think is ridiculous hmm. um so i think like a few structural things like that should still yeah. change especially from a capital perspective the way that is dispersed but apart from that i think the ecosystem today is ready for more w- yes. women entrepreneurs to come in and there's so many amazing yeah. women who've already kind of paved the way yeah. for us you know like falguni nayar yeah. and vinita singh and namita Definitely. like all of them like yes. amazing powerhouses and you know they hold themselves yeah. and other women founders to such high standards and we're so lucky to be in their company oh, i so. uh, i was also particularly very excited for this conversation yeah because um, all my friends mostly are males all my mm-hmm. colleagues are 
happen yeah. to be males only yeah. so i'm looking um, yeah. to expand my circle yeah. and have more uh, women in my circle and yeah. i that is one of the reasons why i really uh, respect um, and the privilege i have that i'm being part of that whatsapp group yeah. and i'm i haven't met many of them but i'm connected with this very close knit circle and i can ask for help i don't have to hesitate yeah. we have another group and i have to think twice before asking the question and i'm much more comfortable in this group and yeah. uh, every day i have some kind of question there ki yeah. uh, किसी को इसको जानता है उसको जानता है इसको जानता है समटाइम आई फील लाइक बहुत ज्यादा हो रहा है लाइक इट्स ओके इट्स नो ऑनेस्टली आई लव दिस ग्रुप बिकॉज़ आई एम अ पार्ट ऑफ सो मेनी फाउंडर ग्रुप चैट्स लाइक आई जॉइन देम लाइक इट्स नोबडीज बिजनेस या बट अ लॉट ऑफ देम बिकम जस्ट प्लेसेस टू आस्क आस्क यस यू नो अ लॉट ऑफ देम आर लाइक कैन आई गेट दिस कैन आई गेट दैट एंड नोबडीज रिस्पोंडिंग टू ईच अदर आल्सो यू नो दैट पीपल आर ओनली ओपनिंग दैट चैट व्हेन दे वांट टू आस्क समथिंग व्हाट आई लव अबाउट दिस ग्रुप um is that when someone posts something there's so many meaningful interactions yeah. with it not just requests for like business stuff but even when someone is like hey did you guys see this article yeah. and people like really discuss it it feels like a community yeah. it doesn't feel like one person is broadcasting to everyone it feels like everyone in that community is and everyone puts effort to help like yesterday yeah. only i asked uh, if anyone knows um, chumbak founder shubhra mm-hmm. because i want to mm-hmm. Uh, bring her on the podcast. Mm-hmm. I love the brand. Yeah. I just love the brand. Yeah. There is not a single time when I'm on streets and <laughs> there is one chum- chumbak store I see and I don't get yeah. into. I won't buy. Yeah. I'll just I have to get yeah. inside the store. I'll yeah. just check out everything. It's like so satisfying <laughs> experience for me. So yeah. I I I have always wanted to have her on the podcast, but okay. I was not in touch. Yeah. And then Divya. Baiju's founder yeah. replied to me, and she yeah. like uh, uh, then uh, she said she'll connect. me with shubhra and then she messaged me on dm and then she was like um kya kaam hai aise karke so i just uh, uh, shared the reference and then she shared the number that tum directly baat kar lo us and that was so like yeah something i could like i was feeling bad ki yaar ye log bolenge har din ye to kuch na kuch puchne lagte hai iska zyada ho raha hai ye zyada fayda utha rahi hai group ka no no and no, then she no, no, no. helped yeah and, and you're providing value right yeah. like you're helping people share their stories yeah. so i think they recognize that and it's wonderful that you know in the middle of being so busy she's still able to yes, do that yes that's amazing um, Yeah, I was just gonna say like I'm sorry I missed that message, but I think her kids went to school with my little sister, so my mom also knows that. Oh. So I, but uh, you're all reconnected, so that's good. Yeah, I'm just waiting for her message. So if yeah. she doesn't reply, I'll yeah, message. yeah, we'll catch her at the school <laughs> pickup point then. Yeah, you have yeah. to be shameless and yeah. you have to be like. I'm like messaging everyone every day. Like it takes, I think, twenty, thirty percent of my time. I'm just yeah. cold reaching to people, and I'm just figuring out a way, stalking everyone on LinkedIn. That, ah, cha, ye iska connection is there. WhatsApp pe puchte connected ho ki nahi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. It was very nice talking to you, Ritika. Great, uh, Ritika. Thank you so much for joining us. Nice to have been here. Thank you so much.